The Kirby series is typically known for bright colors, happy and positive nature, and overall warm, fuzzy feelings. However, that doesn't mean it doesn't have its dark and scary moments. This includes fighting floating eyeballs or entire planets in danger of annihilation. Many Kirby characters have thus been through some deadly situations, but which one would most likely survive the deadliness of Squid Game? I'm Caleb with 1UP Binge and this is Squid Game Kirby Edition. Before the contestants are introduced, let's cover some ground rules. First and foremost, most Kirby characters possess superhuman abilities. We're only allowing them to use those abilities as long as it doesn't break the rules of the game. For example, anyone who makes it to the glass bridge that can hover or fly will not be allowed to do so. Secondly, possession seems to be a popular ability in this series. This won't be allowed at any point. This means Morpho Knight will not be a competitor, as the butterfly seems to require possessing slash absorbing someone in order to take on this form slash character. We're also not allowing outside weapons. This includes anything not attached to them such as swords or hammers. That being said, costumes or outfits that grant abilities that couldn't be used otherwise will be allowed as long as it doesn't break the rules. Lastly, many Kirby characters can also transform or go through multiple phases. These will only be allowed so long as they can be used at will and don't break the rules. So Kirby will not be able to use copy abilities as those require consuming something or someone else in order to use. Inhales are still allowed as long as they're spit back out. With all of that out of the way, let's introduce the competitors in this edition of Squid Game. We have Kirby, King DDD, Meta Knight, Marx, Magalore, Alphalin, Fecto Forgo, Galactica Knight, Bandana D, Wispy Woods, DeRoach, Clawreline, Gory Mondo, Silly Dillo, Leon, Dynablade, President Haltman, Susie, from Planet Robobot for reference, Prince Fluff, Goriath, Highness, Darkmind, Nightmare, and Queen Sectonia. Now that we have our rules and competitors, let's begin with our first round, Red Light, Green Light. In this game, you want to move during a green light and stop when a red light is called. If any movements detected during a red light, you get eliminated. You also want to get to the end of the field before time expires. Speed, patience, and attentiveness are key qualities here. Meta Knight is a character who excels here. He demonstrated great feats of speed, especially with the use of his wings. He can be completely focused, so looking for red light calls wouldn't be a challenge for him. Clawreline also moves on. She's a smart and clever character, so watching for red lights should be easy. Combined with her incredible speed, and she's practically guaranteed to cross. We have a few characters getting eliminated here, starting with Wispy Woods. Simple fact is, he's a tree. He doesn't really move. He wouldn't be able to make it across in time. Silly Dillo also falls here. He may be strong, but he is also often oblivious and forgetful, so he'd likely miss red light calls, causing elimination. Our last elimination in this round is Highness. Highness at this point has given into the darkness within his heart and seemed to do so on his own accord. As a result, he's much more maniacally insane, leading to erratic and unpredictable outbursts. This would likely be his downfall during any of these games. We've eliminated three so far, leaving us with 21 remaining. We'll now move on to our next game, the Honeycomb Challenge. The objective is to cut out the shape and two things are needed, a steady hand and keeping calm under pressure. Missing either one of these factors could mean elimination. A couple standouts here are Kirby and Alphalin. Both of them, while powerful, are very gentle in nature, so they should easily avoid breaking it. We aren't sure how they would hold the tools needed in their stubby arms, but if Kirby can already hold things like swords, hammers, and the like, it's safe to say both can do the same here. Our first elimination in this game is actually Fecto Forgo. 
Alphalan and Facto are two halves of the same being. Alphalan is the gentle side and Facto is far from it. He's shown to snap and lose it the moment his plans start to fail. We believe that if he gets even slightly frustrated with the honeycomb, anything he might do in response would be his downfall. Two other forgotten land bosses that fall here are Leon and Gory Mondo. The biggest obstacle these two face in this game is their size and the strength that comes with it. Their hands are big enough to where cutting a delicate piece of honeycomb would be difficult to do. The next to go is Dynablade. Not only is this bird bigger than most, but they've only got their feet to work with. It doesn't seem likely that they'd use their razor sharp feet to cut the honeycomb successfully. President Holtman is the next to go. Holtman comes across as your standard antagonistic company CEO. He's kind of like Mr. Waternoose from Monsters Inc. in that he'd do anything to keep his company going, regardless of who is in the way or who it affects. Any sign someone might get in the way of Holtman's plans could send him into a blind rage. This demeanor would likely make him fall. Our final elimination in this round is Goriath. Long story short, he's always angry. Right from the beginning of the fight, this gorilla-based foe is roaring and pounding the ground. We don't think he would ever be calm enough to cut something so fragile as a honeycomb, so he has to go. With him gone, we lost 6 characters in this round alone, leaving us with a current total of just 15 left already. We now move on to our next event that isn't technically one of the games, but is still important to include. The Midnight Brawl. Since this isn't an official game, the remaining competitors will have much more freedom in how they can survive. You can survive by fighting long enough to survive, or try to be stealthy by hiding until the brawl's over. Galactonite is a sure survivor here. When Meta Knight makes his wish to Galactic Nova to fight the greatest warrior in the galaxy to become stronger, it's Galactonite who gets summoned. His legend states that he was sealed away due to fear of his incredible power. Even without his weapon and shield, we think Galactonite could still hold his own. Chloraline is another sure bet to survive. With her incredible agility, speed, acrobatic skills, and claws, she has a very high chance of being able to at least hold off others long enough to survive. If she doesn't fight, she has the ability to turn invisible for a short time. She could take that time to quickly find a place to hide. We have two characters who we think wouldn't make it past this round. Unfortunately, the first of the two to go is the majestic penguin, King DDD. DDD's rarely seen fighting without his hammer or some other weapon, so it's hard to say at this point that he would be able to survive long in a fight to the death against some of the remaining players. Additionally, his brightly colored outfit and body make it more of a challenge to hide anywhere. If he could take on his buff from Kirby Star Allies, he might have had a chance, but since he had an outside force that allowed him to do that, it's not allowed. Our other competitor to go is another of royal stature, Prince Fluff. As far as we know, Fluff has always been made of yarn, making his body very fragile. This would make him a very quick and easy target and be among the first to be eliminated. Losing only two contestants now, we are left with 13 people moving on. We now go on to the team-based event in this squid game, Tug of War. This one's self-explanatory, with the addition of the deadly pit in the middle for the losing team. Instead of assigning players to a team, we'll be deciding who progresses based on two things, their ability, or lack thereof, to work with others, and their overall strength. Missing either one of these doesn't immediately mean elimination, though chances of survival drop a bit. Our three noteworthy survivors are Kirby, Meta Knight, and Chloraline. These three have demonstrated many times that they're more than willing to work with others. Kirby works with pretty much anyone who will ally with him. Meta Knight used to fight alongside a group of warriors who, oddly enough, are collectively called the Meta Knights, and Chloraline fought with and on behalf of the members of the Beast Pack, which she did alongside Leon. We believe these factors practically guarantee their survival. 
On the other end, a surprising elimination here is Galactonite. Bear with us on this one as there isn't a whole lot known about him. From what we have seen, he's almost never depicted as a team player. It's also been noted by Stardream that after Galactonite is summoned, he might destroy a planet or two for seemingly no reason. It's this idea, along with his lack of known teamwork history, that we believe Galactica Knight would fall. Our next contestant to be eliminated here is Marx. One thing has helped him survive for this long. In Kirby Star Allies and Smash Ultimate, Marx is able to use his first transformation at will. His downfall here is his mischievous side. Marx is a bit of a jester, and he will sometimes act like one as a result. Not to mention that his mischievous side has caused him to have Kirby do everything for him so he could obtain incredible power. Nowadays, he might be able to work with other people to fight a common enemy, but when it comes to a mischievous character, a jester no less, you never know when they might do something goofy or sneaky to achieve a personal goal instead of a group one. Magalore is in a very similar boat. Like Marx, Magalore is more of an ally as of late. He not only pulled off the feat of tricking Kirby, but also King DDD, Bandana D, and even and Meta Knight to do the dirty work to repair his ship so that he could obtain ultimate power. For all we know, he might try something similar again in the future if he feels he has another way of becoming stronger. Our last two eliminations here are two of the biggest baddies in the series, Dark Mind and Nightmare. These two are a couple of your standard villains. In one way or another, they prefer to have other people get the job done for them. Basically, it doesn't seem very likely that either one would truly want to work with people. Another batch of players got eliminated here, leaving us with just 8 contestants left. Starting off the first of our final 3 games, we've reached the tricky Marvels game. This game is a particularly interesting one. There are multiple ways the game can play out. You can try to play traditionally, but more commonly, it boils down to manipulation. If you can successfully manipulate your opponent in some way to give you all their marbles and show the guard that you have them all, your opponent will get eliminated. Meta Knight is once again in the spotlight of success. Depicted as highly intelligent and somewhat of a strategist, Meta Knight could quickly learn and adapt to whatever game is played. He'd also easily be able to catch on to and resist any attempts to manipulate him. In Forgotten Land, it's indicated that, before Kirby got to the Forgotten Land, Meta Knight was one of the only living beings that was able to resist being controlled by Fecto Forgo with just his will. Willpower. Meta Knight's code of honor may prevent him from trying to manipulate anyone himself, but his resistance to manipulation, along with his learning slash adaptation skills, would more than help him survive to the next round. Moving on to those getting eliminated, we unfortunately have to say goodbye to the main man himself, Kirby. Usually, Kirby's mindset works like that of a young child. He would either lose because he probably wouldn't understand how the game works or someone could easily manipulate him. This goes especially if they offer him food. We'll also see Alphalin get eliminated here. Alphalin can be very passive and timid in nature. This could lead to him getting manipulated fairly easily. By the time he catches on, it may be too late for him to resist. Another competitor that we wish we didn't have to say goodbye to is Bandana D. While he's skilled and incredibly loyal, Bandana D is very anxious and and insecure. If he's up against an opponent that would notice and exploit this, he'd likely not last long before his opponent took all his marbles right out from under him. Squeaking his way through until now, our last elimination here is Deroach. 
The factor leading to this outcome comes from Squeak Squad. At one point in the story, DeRoach pushed Kirby out of the way of a chest, which he believed would give him an increase in power in order to defeat Kirby. This lets us know that he, even when not being controlled by anyone, he do what he thinks is necessary to get a leg up. This could easily lead him to make foolish decisions, which is cause for elimination in a game like this. With just two games left, we have gotten down to just four players. Is your favorite still in it? We have reached the semi-final game, The Glass Bridge. This game's a bit tricky. Most of what happens really boils down to luck. The ones who go last have a higher chance of winning. We'll decide which two are eliminated based on their character. If they are a bit more prideful than the others, it's safe to say that they would likely pick a number to go first. Our first competitor to get eliminated here is Susie from Planet Robobot. Susie's a bit prideful and egotistical, feeling that her level of intelligence is superior to others. As a result, she'd want to go first to demonstrate this, highly decreasing her odds at survival. The other character to fall just short of the final round for similar reasons no less is Queen Sectonia. Her vanity plays a big role in her personality. After becoming a much more tyrannical ruler, Sectonia became a proud, arrogant, and egotistical leader, even claiming herself to be like a goddess. Her narcissistic, prideful nature would likely cause her to go, thus fall first. This leaves us with our finalists that are moving on to the final round. The first of which is none other than Meta Knight. Being a trained warrior, Meta Knight has the skills and discipline needed to pass this game. He has the patience and humbleness, especially when compared to who's left, to sit back and wait for others to go first. As they are trying to cross, he would be analyzing carefully to see which glass panels are safe to step on. Our other finalist is the ferocious feline, Chloraline. She hasn't been shown to be too prideful, especially being compared to the two getting eliminated. She's demonstrated a good sense of selflessness ruling alongside Leon and going out of her way to restore Leon's mind and soul instead of taking the entire role of leadership for herself. Not to mention, with speed and acrobatic skills, she'd practically glide while running over the remaining glass panels to safety. With all of this established, let's dive into the final and titular round, The Squid Game. There's actually a real way to play this game, however, the show has it boiled down to a one-on-one -on -one battle to the death. So, the remaining question is, between Chloraline and Meta Knight, Who's most likely to win a fight to the death with the rules we have established? Meta Knight wouldn't have his sword, but he might actually prefer that in this case. He always wants a fair fight, which is made apparent by him always giving Kirby a sword to use when they fight. Since Chloraline wouldn't have a sword either, he would accept this. Both move incredibly quick and both can vanish or turn invisible for brief periods of time. Chloraline has her claws and Meta Knight has powerful kicks. He also has his cape allowing him to fly. This is where it starts to tip in Meta Knight's favor. With very little on the field for Chloraline to jump around on, Meta Knight has full advantage in the air. His aerial attacks will also allow him to take more advantage of his powerful kicks. The biggest thing to help Meta Knight is his superior recorded experience in combat. He has fought alongside his fellow Meta Knights, he has fought with and against Kirby many times, and he fought and defeated Galacta Knight, the apparent strongest warrior in the galaxy. With all this in mind, we feel comfortable stating that, more often than not, Meta Knight comes out on top and Chloraline falls just short as the runner-up. Congratulations to Meta Knight. He might very well be the real strongest warrior in the galaxy now. But what do you guys think? Do you think someone else should have won? Who do you think should have gotten eliminated when? Let us know in the comments below. Also, feel free to tell us what you would like to see in the future. I'm Caleb with 1UP Binge and we thank you so much for watching.